Hello everyone. Today we are looking at a research paper by Niam Burns and William T. Today's topic is astrophysical existential threats. Allow me to walk you through the timeline of this presentation. We will start off with a small introduction before switching to the methodology of this paper. We will follow that up with the most relevant results and eventually get to the conclusion. First, let's examine the Fermi paradox which is a driving force in this field of research. If the universe is teeming with aliens, then where is everybody? Enrico Fermi. The Fermi paradox is an ongoing investigation into the fact that we haven't yet encountered any evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence in the universe. At least that is what they're telling us. Hmm. The following paper tries to find a possible explanation to help us understand the paradox. The second point on our list is the Drake equation. These are the variables used in the equation. It is prevalent in calculating the probability of existing ETI in most papers, like shown on the screen. This paper, however, approaches the Fermi paradox from a different perspective. We try to find an explanation by estimating the probability of the species getting annihilated before reaching spacefaring capabilities and hereby escaping extinction. Let us wrap this section up with some threats that are not included in this paper. We are going to investigate different astrophysical threats in detail that possibly pose a danger to our society. Not included in this paper are the two following ones. Stellar evolution. All the stars evolve over time following their evolutionary cycle. However, this is not random. It follows a long predictable path and is due to that most likely not a primary cause of ETI extinction. In the example of our solar system, our sun will eventually cause all the liquid water to boil off as well as the atmosphere on our planet to disappear, making life ultimately impossible. Another possibility is that our sun grows into a red giant as it reaches the end of its cycle, swallowing all the planets of our solar system. Furthermore, we won't be looking into the galactic winds. Indeed, they do produce ionizing radiation, which we know to be harmful. However, their potency has not yet been well studied. Due to the inclusion of catastrophes with similar effects, the paper tries to reduce the overestimation of said danger. Now, we move on to the methodology. First, we are taking a look at the four different types of catastrophes. This is meant to clarify the four different types as described in this paper without going into too much detail, while later only concentrating on the astrophysical threats. Feel free to pause the video at any time to take a more detailed look as I will be speeding through this part. Here is a quick summary of the astrophysical catastrophes. At this point in the presentation, we won't look at them any further. In the section of geophysical catastrophes, we distinguish between the following four. Magnetic field change, the collapse or reversal of the Earth's magnetic field. Natural climate change explains the change in the carbon dioxide silicate cycle. Planetary dynamics change describes a possible change in the Earth's rotation rate or inclination. And last, we have supervolcanism. This involves Deccan traps type events, which played a role in the KT extinction that we will cover later. Next on our list are the biological catastrophes. Here we have natural disease. I believe we should all be familiar with the virus shown in this image above me. Interspecies competition. Could apes someday take over the world, maybe? Natural species die off. Species are constantly evolving and the ones who fail to adapt will inadvertently die off. And last in this list, we have the exospecies competition. Whether they are sentient beings or just viruses from deep space, 
they could lead to the human demise. This picture above me was taken during a US Navy training mission and the Pentagon still fails to this day to explain the origin of the seen object. And lastly, the following seven scenarios of social technological catastrophes. First one, artificial climate change. Global warming, or the opposite, a nuclear winter, could both lead to the extinction of the human race. Artificial intelligence competition. We need to be careful with what we create if we don't want to become the prey of AI. Genetic engineering change. Genetic engineering through CRISPR-Cas9, for example, has a lot of advantages, but we need to be alert on about the negative consequences that could follow from messing with our own DNA. Intraspecies competition. The global arms race has brought us up to a point where we could destroy the Earth multiple times with our current arsenal. Next up, megascale engineering failure. We could, by accident, call out the next ice age while trying to construct a mechanism meant to stop global warming. Nanoscale engineering failure. Accidentally releasing organic matter converting and multiplying nanobots could mean the end of humankind. And finally, technological turnaway where humankind decides to turn away from technology and wander back into nature, ignoring modern medicine and all possible dangers from space. Now, let's look at some of the key assumptions fixed at the beginning of the paper. This research is done on these three main points. The paper only looks at carbon-based life forms, in the habitable zone with liquid water available. Furthermore, we will be concentrating on our Milky Way with a stellar population of around 100 to 400 billion stars. The radius is estimated at 28 kiloparsecs. Eventually, we will analyze the difference between civilization destroying and species extinction threats. Debilitation that doesn't lead to an extinction is seen as good enough. Next up is the main method of calculation used in this paper. To calculate the different probabilities, this paper uses a simple Poisson distribution. The Poisson distribution expresses the probability of a given number of discrete events occurring in a fixed interval of time. We use a compound process to calculate the cumulative effects of all the factors. This involves a complex system with multiple independent astrophysical failure modes that would be too complicated and time consuming for this presentation. Last in methodology, we will look at the astrophysical catastrophes in detail. Now, we will be concentrating on the background information as well as the lethality modalities for every single catastrophe. First on the list are gamma ray bursts. GRBs are highly energetic short term events that produce gamma rays, X rays, as well as cosmic rays. The source of origin is not yet completely understood, but is suspected to originate from active galactic nuclei, which are powered by massive black holes like Sagittarius A in the center of our galaxy, as well as neutron stars and black hole mergers. The illustration here shows a star's core collapsing into a neutron star, hereby releasing massive amounts of radiation in form of a gamma ray burst. Let us have a look at how gamma ray bursts can be dangerous for us. The paper Melaton Thomas describes that the highly intense ionizing radiation leads to the depletion of the planetary ozone layer. This increases the amount of dangerous UVB, radiation able to reach the planet's surface, which leads to an increase of life form mortality due to the damaging effect of the, on the DNA, causing destructions and mutations. Additionally, UVB disrupts key biochemical pathways, 
which increases the chance of various types of cancer. As seen here, UV radiation can lead to formation of thymine dimers, destroying the structure of the DNA double helix. Next off is the giant molecular clouds. We can find giant dust clouds all over the solar system. These consist primarily of hydrogen atoms as well as subatomic particles like protons and neutrons called baryons. Due to the rotation of the Milky Way, solar systems can be swept through the GMCs. The density of our local interstellar medium is approximately 0.2 hydrogen per cubic centimeter while GMCs have a density greater than 100 to 300 hydrogen atoms per cubic centimeter. They can extend across 100 parsecs and can comprise up to several million solar masses. Shown in the background are the pillars of creation, photographed by the Hubble Space Telescope within the Eagle Nebula. Just like gamma ray bursts, giant molecular clouds can interfere with the ozone layer via increased cosmic ray flux. However, the primary lethality mechanism is called enhanced glaciation, which is described in Pavlov et al. Our sun creates a sort of protective bubble called the heliosphere that surrounds the solar system, as seen in this picture. Giant molecular clouds can interfere with the heliosphere, reducing it or even collapsing it. The collapse enables interstellar dust particles to reach and accrete in the Earth's atmosphere. These particles absorb and scatter the sun's insulation, leading to an anti-greenhouse effect. The planetary surface, as well as the lower atmosphere, start cooling, which can lead to a glaciation of the whole surface. The resulting product is above me and is called Snowball Earth. We commence with the large bolide impactor. LBI include objects such as asteroids and comets, whose impact is typically accompanied by a large atmospheric fireball. We can further distinguish between the different types in this simple illustration. Feel free to pause the video for a better look. The other picture above me shows the world famous Halley Comet that returns to Earth's vicinity every 75 years. The next time it will be visible is in 2061. As we all know, LBI can cause major extinction level events. One of such events was the Cretaceous Tertiary Extinction. The Chicks Club asteroid wiped out roughly 75% of all land and sea species 66 million years ago. The impacting object had a diameter of about 10 to 15 kilometers. This video is a simulation of an asteroid impact roughly the same size as Chick Club impacting in Paris. The primary effects of large bolide impactors are described in Chapman C's paper as following. First, we have thermal energy as a result of the impact, as well as the following blast and shock waves leveling everything in their vicinity. This can further result in the ejection of matter into the atmosphere, which can lead to a global cooling event up to the initiation of a new ice age. Next on our list is the rogue celestial object. As an RCO, we define stars, black holes and planets which are not initially bound to the receiving solar system. In order for these objects to be classified as RCOs, they need to have a sufficient mass to disturb the orbits of the planets in the affected solar system. The encounters with RCOs can give us four different outcomes. In the event of a direct collision, the planets would get all destroyed. 
while in a near miss the gravitational and electromagnetic effects could interfere with the local biosphere. As described in Arbab et al, objects can cause a gravitational perturbation of the orbital parameters, leading to an injection of the planet from the solar system, or in the last scenario, a shift in the orbit to propel the planet out of the habitable zone. Now we will be taking a look at the stellar proton event. SPEs are highly energetic explosions originating in stars. These include solar flares, which are flashes of intense light radiation that erupt from small sections of the star, as well as coronal mass ejections, which are giant clouds of particles, plasma and magnetic fields that are ejected from the star. The lethality effects are similar to those of gamma ray bursts, with the destruction of the ozone layer leading to more UVB radiation reaching the surface, eventually causing DNA damage in organisms. The video shows a coronal mass ejection that took place on August 31st, 2012. Now, one of the most exciting galactic phenomena are the supernovae. As a star reaches the end of its evolutionary cycle, it can explode, releasing high amounts of gamma rays, X-ray photons, and cosmic rays. In contrast to the relativistic beam a GRB releases, SNEs release a spherical wave front with a much smaller lethal distance of around 10 parsecs. The image to my right shows the remains of the 1967A supernova being the closest one to Earth yet and taking place in the Large Magellanic Cloud. Once again, the effects are similar, like the ones from GRBs and SPEs, leading to the eventual destruction of the DNA. The video to my right is an animation of the Crab supernova explosion that happened 1054. Last but not least, we will look into the unstable solar system dynamics. Solar systems are inherently unstable over prolonged intervals of time, for example 10 million years or more. Gravitational interactions among planets can cause their orbital parameters to shift, inducing a chaotic solar system motion. Even small gravitational effects can have a massive impact over prolonged time and result in catastrophic planetary orbital behavior. Just like in the case of RCOs, we have four different outcomes as described by J. Lasker and M. Gassineau. In a direct collision between two or more planets, all will get destroyed. A near miss causes the planet's local biosphere to change due to the gravitational and electromagnetic effects of the attacking planets. Third, the instability can cause the ejection of the planet from the solar system, or it could shift the planet's orbit out of the habitable zone. Now we are hopping into the results and analysis part of this presentation. This is a quick summary of the catastrophe types and their corresponding frequencies used to calculate the following tables. This is not meant to be understood in every last detail as we can continue with the end results in the following slides without going further into the calculation. First, we compare the astrophysical threats relative to each other. As we can see in the probability column of the table, LBI poses by far the highest threat to an ETI. It is even three times as likely as all the others combined. This is not surprising as we have learned from the previous slides that LBI events can be catastrophical, like in the KT, KT extinction event. They are also the most abundant due to the asteroid belt stretching between Mars and Jupiter. SNEs, GMCs, and GRBs, 
pose a low threat level and occur all roughly at the same frequencies. RCOs as well as USDs pose, pose the lowest threat to an ETI. Luckily, our closest phenomena, the SPE, poses a relatively minor existential threat. Analyzing the species extinction probability shows that there is almost a 100% probability that species mass extinction could occur every 100 million years. Looking at an interval of 10 million, it seems to be at 28%. 1 million years, the probability is only 3%. This leads us to conclude that any sentient species within our galaxy has roughly 100 million years to evolve from a multicellular organism to a spacefaring civilization in order to evade extinction. But the known average species longevity is said to be in the order of 10 million years. Knowing this, we can safely assume that the astrophysical threats are not the primary ca cause of ongoing species extinction. If we look at the civilization destruction possibility, excluding extinction, the probability is shown to have increased in all time intervals. LBI is still the most probable one, with even reaching a 100% on the 100 million chart. However, these results are highly speculative with a large margin of error from our values since we have never observed an ETI that was destroyed and managed to rebound back from an astrophysical catastrophe. Let's have a look at some possible responses to astrophysical existential threats. If an ETI evolves into a spacefaring species, it has two options to avert the dangers. Either it can harden the defenses of the receiving system against threats like GRBs, SNEs, SPEs, or GMCs. This would require a massive number of resources as well as some planetary level geoengineering efforts. On the other hand, the speci species can leave the endangered solar system with hopes of finding a new habitable one. One of the biggest breakthroughs in space defense history is the invention of the DART system. Recently, NASA's DART mission has set out with high goals to test an approach of protecting against LBIs. A spacecraft had been sent into a nearby double asteroid system with the goal to change the trajectory of the smaller orbiting asteroid called Dimorphos. To achieve this, the spacecraft would ram into the asteroid with high speeds. The mission was a success, shortening the orbital period by 32 minutes. Above me is the video and the last few images of our spacecraft DART before it crashed into Dimorphos. Let us return to the beginning of the presentation. Was this analysis able to shed some light on the Fermi paradox? We have learned from the paper that astrophysical threats alone are not sufficient enough to explain the mysterious paradox. Due to the fact that 100 million years is most likely more than enough for a species to evolve from a microorganism to a spacefaring civilization. Perhaps if we take the other three civilization ending catastrophes into our calculations, we could get one of the many possible solutions to the Fermi paradox. To wrap up this presentation, let's have a look into the conclusion. The paper has summarized the most important threats and estimated their danger to ETI. It takes an important step in understanding and hopefully solving the Fermi paradox, turning it into the Fermi theory. The research was based on many different references to include all possible aspects and the best data available. However, the values used in the calculations are still highly speculative. The paper also rejects the possibility of ETI encounters that could alter the way civilizations develop. The potential for further studies is huge. With new technologies arising every day, newer and more precise information will be available. 
This enables us to update the values in order to increase precision. Another great follow-up study could include the other three possible catastrophic pathways in order to further extend the calculations and get more precise probabilities and outcomes. Eventually, we have come to an end of this presentation. This is a very exciting topic with a lot of potential for further research. Thank you for your attention.